Open our Bible this morning to the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mighty God of heaven, we thank you this morning. Wherever the gospel is sounded, the whole attention of heaven is released. Thank you for paying attention to us today and making this place your dwelling place, O oh God. So our heart is open to receive from you this morning. As you pump out your word from your throne, please let it go through my heart. To everyone who is here this morning listening, let every life be baptized by the Holy Ghost, let the power of salvation of the gospel encapsulate everyone who stand here this morning, waiting to have you touch them. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name, O God. In Jesus' name, we have all declared. Amen. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why this message? why this message that's what we may be pumping out in your heart right now why is this message being preached we know the gospel name we know what it is why must we be emphasizing it again a morning like this all right why this message all right i told you respond when you need to respond when you are not to respond you mute your mic you have to be vigilant on this praise the lord why this message the purpose of this message is to put clarity on what the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is and what is not. In order to avoid being tossed to and fro like babies, 
with every wind of men's rules, streaks, and cunningness, and craftiness, and deceitful plotting to the enslaving instead of to the saving. Hallelujah. I'm going to repeat that again. Why this message? Number one, to put the clarity on what the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ is all about, uh, what is not uh, all about, that to avoid being tossed to and fro like babies with every wind of men's rules, tricks, uh, corny craftiness, deceitful plotting to enslave uh, instead of to save. Hallelujah. And I'm going to confirm that with you in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 to 15. That we should no longer be children. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 to 15. That we should no longer be children. Toast to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. Number two. Why this message? False prophet or Christ are around ready to deceive many. Matthew chapter 24 verse 24. Matthew 24 verse 24. False prophet or Christ are all around ready to deceive many. For false Christ and false prophet will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible even the very elect. Number three. Why this message? Because perilous time is here. Perilous time is here. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reproof. Rebook. Exalt. With all long suffering. And doctrine. Verse 3. For the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss, shall they heap to themselves. Teachers, having itching ears, verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. So then, you will ask me, what is then not the gospel? What is it that the gospel is not? In the book of First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4a. I'm going to be clearing it out here. What is it that the gospel is not? And I, brethren, why I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech. Everybody say, excellence of speech. Or of, speech. of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything everybody say no anything no anything among you except jesus christ and in crucified verse 3 i was with you in weakness in fear in much trembling verse 4 uh, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive enticing words of human wisdom but in a demonstration of the spirit and of power verse 5 that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, in this particular passage here, we see very vital, important thing that we have been described by Apostle Paul. Of what the gospel is not by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Number one, he said the gospel is not a branch of human philosophy or prowess in words. Very clear. If you look at the very very first line of the verse it did not come with the excellence of speech so therefore the gospel is not a branch of human philosophy or prowess in words number two is verse two there it said i determined not to know anything ah that means the gospel is not a mere formal education to gain intellectual knowledge so that means of what the poor apostle paul knew he said he will minister to them and he behave as if there's no nothing. He has come with all submission, with all humility, dropping his own intellectual 
skill and knowledge so the gospel is not intellectual skill and knowledge of men very clear the number three point you must take note of is in verse three it said i was here with you in weakness in fear and in much trembling that means the gospel cannot be preached in human confidence of the flesh hallelujah the gospel cannot be preached in the total dependency on our brain on the accumulation we have in our brain so actually it's not a wisdom of book so we have to come to god in a complete weakness in the complete emptiness ready to allow god to give us what he want to tell his people and will declare as his oracle so the gospel is not a dependence in confidence of human hallelujah in philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 to confirm that also philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 said let nothing be done through vain through selfish ambition or conceit but in loneliness of the mind let each esteem others better than themselves hallelujah so it's very important Amen. to know that the gospel is not what we give out in the glory of the flesh in the glory of our knowledge that we accumulated and the glory of our intellectual accumulation so it's completely different from the experience of man number four it's in the it's also in the verse, verse four there and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive enticing word of human wisdom look at it very well so the gospel is clearly not enticing word of women wisdom okay the gospel is nothing to do with the enticing or words of woman wisdom number five the gospel is not a mere motivational speech nor is it the word of men that encourages encourages men the gospel is not a motivational speech or the word of men that encourages men hallelujah now you ask me what then is the gospel hallelujah what then is the gospel the gospel is the power of god unto salvation it's very important to clear this out in the mind of every young person in the community in our nation it's very important to clear out what the gospel is so that we don't we, we, so that we are not carried away by the manipulations of false prophets we're not carried away by the wind of doctrine all around us and we're not carried away by the assertions of men by the statement of men that actually inform the itching ears that get of comfort our brain for, for the period, short period of time and then we are back to our soul so gospel of god is a description total description of god is who god is himself hallelujah number one the gospel is the power of god unto salvation now first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 uh, my speech and uh, my preaching were not with persuasive word of human wisdom but in the demonstration of the holy spirit and power so we are the gospel is not power of god unto salvation it is confirmed that the gospel is simply power of god i will say power of god so the power gospel of. should be able to release offer what we call power of god and number two under that the gospel after it offers the power of god then salvation is released hallelujah salvation is released so much chapter 1 verse 16 romans chapter 1 verse 16 for i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is power of god unto salvation to everyone who believes for the jew first also for the greek power of god leading to salvation hallelujah power of god leading to salvation now salvation from what we are going to clear that out clearly we are going to clear that out clearly in the book of matthew chapter 1 verse 21 matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and ye sh and she shall bring forth a son and thou shall call his name jesus for he shall save his people from sin so the gospel simply offers salvation from sin hallelujah and you're asking me it's only only it's only about sin no there are more things let's look at the book of luke chapter 4 verse 17 to 22 luke chapter 4 verse 17 to 22 luke chapter 4 verse 17 to 22 and jesus was handed the book of the prophet isaiah see what our lord jesus christ said 
And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Look at it there. The gospel come by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The utterance the gospel possesses, it is the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Very clear. And it's not, the gospel is not what we think we want to say. The gospel is not an idea we gather together. The gospel is not experiences we put together. Uh, the gospel is not uh, information that we want to pass across to the people. The Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. Hallelujah. So, the gospel is a power simply from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that comes from Christ and Christ that comes from God. Now, listen carefully. To preach the gospel to the poor. Now, here it is. God does not send the gospel to fill the wisdom of men. Listen carefully. God sent the gospel to feed the poor hearts. Hallelujah. The poor in the spirit. The blessed are they that are poor in the spirit. Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the gospel is simply sent to the poor. Not, the, not poverty by money. But poverty by the virtue of a counteract heart. A heart that is submissive and ready to receive the word from the gospel. That look unto men as if is foolish. That look unto men that as if is, a, is, is mere ordinary wisdom. That look unto men as foolishness. That is what it is. So the heart has to be ready. The heart has to be poor. It means the heart have to be ready to receive the gospel. So in another way now, the gospel has not been sent by God through Christ unto us to feed our educational skill. Right? So the gospel is not to feed the interest of man. So the gospel is not to feed our passion. Hallelujah. The gospel is meant to feed our heart that is ready. Prepare to listen to the word of God, however it appears foolish. Hallelujah. So the gospel is not an informative session. So the gospel is not a, 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 it's not a seminar, a professorial seminar that is being offered to men to help them know how to eat, how to drink, how to cook, how to wake up, how to you know, go to bed. So the gospel is far more than that the gospel does not help human wisdom the gospel has been proclaimed by christ to go ahead and touch the life of the one who is ready when his heart open poor the heart is empty ready to receive something that is beyond him into his heart hallelujah it's very 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 important to know this now look at it he said he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted so now salvation from what not only salvation from sin the gospel offers salvation from brokenheartedness people don't understand this when the gospel is being preached miracles can happen in many ways right miracle can happen in many ways miracle can happen by the virtue of God forgiving your sin. That's number one. Miracle can happen by the salvation of God from your broken heartedness. Some people today, their heart is very tight. Their heart is not ready. When the gospel is released, it has the ability, as they say in the book of Acts chapter 2, uh, chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 27, when this man came around and the gospel was preached to them, we were told that they were pricked in their heart. Amen. They were pricking their heart. There was a healing performed in their heart. And they asked questions. They said, what can we do to be saved? So the gospel really offers salvation to broken heartedness. Then number three, what does the gospel offer? What is the meaning of salvation? What salvation 
is is in that not only a salvation from sin not only salvation from brokenheartedness but salvation from captivity so when the gospel is being preached captivity are being destroyed hallelujah people are liberated people are given liberty from their chains from their captivity so anywhere you are hearing the gospel and is putting people in the liberty setting them free from captivity you know for sure that that is the true gospel of our lord jesus christ now be very careful i've been saying this the gospel is not only just the blind see the lame walk that is just the part of it hallelujah that is just the part of the gospel but that's not the overall es essence of the gospel hallelujah the gospel does much more than healing physical healing it does a lot of spiritual healing it's safe from brokenheartedness it's safe from sin it saves from captivity from the attack from demon attack from evil power and principalities it offers deliverance from bondage salvation from what also the gospel is the power of god unto salvation from what from blindness hallelujah the gospel offers open eye it gives us eye to be able to see the people who have been one we were blind and it is and the uh, the the uh, the Pharisee came to Christ and they were claiming that they have no sin. He said, Because you claim that you have no sin, now you are even more blind. Hallelujah. So the gospel take away blindness. Hallelujah. When the gospel is received, high is open to be able to know things. Hallelujah. When the gospel is preached, the idea to achieve things in life begins to open up for you. When you hear the gospel, faith comes. Hallelujah. Faith comes. Faith to be able to achieve your goal in life comes around and you are able to go through things without without blindness hallelujah gospel offers the power of god unto salvation salvation from what from sin salvation from what from broken heartedness salvation from what from captivity salvation from what from blindness clearly stated in this scripture the gospel is not a philosophy of man the gospel is not an ideology of man the gospel is not education of the brain the gospel it's the power of God unto salvation from sin, from broken heartedness, from captivity of all forces, all powers in heavenly places. That's what the gospel offer. It offers freedom away from blindness. Salvation from what? Salvation from oppression. Hallelujah. You've been most obsessed, oppressed, and even possessed. The gospel offer power of God to save you from all form of oppression hallelujah that's what the gospel offer right. again what the gospel does, does it offer again the gospel proclaim hallelujah it proclaimed the acceptable year of the lord amen it reminds us of the coming of christ clearly we must know what the gospel is offering if we are ignorant of this it is very possible with the wind of doctrine going around in the community and nations of the world today we can be carried away so it's very important to our focus to understand the perspective of the scripture what the gospel is all about when jesus started his ministry the first thing that he did was to open a book referring to the book of isaiah and quoted this particular verse and spoke out it gave a clear description of what the gospel is all about the gospel is not a playlet gospel is not motivational speeches the gospel is not a word of encouragement. Just mere of word of encouragement from man to man. Gospel is a gospel of fire. It's a power of God unto salvation. Salvation from sin. Salvation from broken heartedness. Salvation from captivity. Salvation from blindness. Salvation from oppression. And it proclaims the coming year of God. The final salvation we are going to have. When we are going to meet with Christ in heaven, it gives us the hope of the final salvation, the day of the Lord, the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What does the gospel offer? Hallelujah. It is Amen. not just mere word of man, it's a power of God unto salvation. Number two, what then is the gospel? Number two. It is the discipling through preaching and teaching to the poor what our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. Listen carefully. 
It is the discipline through preaching and teaching to the poor what our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. Look at the word there. Preaching and teaching to the poor. Right? right? Not try to impress the educated. The gospel has not been orchestrated by God to impress the educated. To make the educated happy that they are in the right place. The gospel is not meant to feed the, the inching ear. The gospel does not involve. Knowledge involves. What Albert Einstein, what Isaac Newton said in some of their theories. As the years go by, we discover those theories change over time. But when it comes to the gospel, it does not change over time. Knowledge of human can evolve over time. But when it comes to the gospel, the gospel does not evolve over time. The gospel is ancient, it's new, and it is new every morning and forever, from eternity to eternity. It does not change a property. Human being can change, knowledge can increase, technology can, can, can change, environment can change, but the word of God, we are told, abides forever. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ has been given in clarity. It is the preaching and teaching to the poor. What our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. The word poor. The poor are the ones the gospel is meant for. Anyone that will despise the gospel in the name of I'm too knowledgeable than this. Then the gospel is not fit for him. Hallelujah. There's no way to craft. Yeah. There's, no, there's nowhere we are told to craft the gospel and polish it and decorate it in such a way that we can help the educated to be able to understand it. And in fact, we are told there is no searching of the understanding of God. Hallelujah. There's no searching of the understanding of God. So when God speaks, no matter how ridiculous it is, we are told that the gospel has the power, no matter how ridiculous it is to the brain, to our flesh, it has the power to offer salvation from sin, from broken heartedness, from captivity, from oppression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's for the poor, for those who are ready. Not everyone you go to minister to will be ready to hear you. When Jesus was going around and was ministering to people around, some people did not listen to him. He shake the dust of his shoes and then moved to the other region. Hallelujah. He began to move and began to preach. The gospel is not to be a force on human. It's not forceful. But the gospel contains power that is able to convert men. The gospel is not an impression you want to give to people. But the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's for the poor. It's for those who are ready to listen. He said, I have some sheep that are not here today. Only that, that, that Jesus said, he said, I have some sheep that are not here today, but they will shall come and join you later. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So God has already known those who are going to be part of the gospel. Those who are going to receive the gospel right from the beginning of ages. Their heart is ready. The gospel needs to reach them. So when we get to a place and people do not accept what we preach, we move on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The gospel must continue. So the gospel is the teaching and preaching of God's word to the poor. Uh, as the Lord has commanded. Now listen to me carefully. In the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 17a. Listen carefully. Luke 4 verse 17a. And, is, and he, Jesus, was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, see what happens. He found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. Why did he say to preach the gospel to the rich? God was very mindful of every expression that comes from his mouth. God is not a joke. 
God is not a joker. He said, so shall my word be. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which has sent it. The semantics and the syntax of God's words are very vital. They are not to be exchanged with what we feel as ideas. As so many interpretations are going around now about the Bible. That we must be mindful of those interpretations. God can't change. God is an unchanging God. He does not repent of his word. Hallelujah. It's meant for the poor. Not those who are poor by money. Those who are ready. If their heart is ready. Who their spirit is ready to receive it. That's, that's why you see some people. When you are listening to them. They, they don't have the will. To be able to accept God's word. Should, should you be blamed for that? After you have done your part? No. Because you have waited upon the Lord. You have cried upon the Lord. You have asked God to give you word. To minister to people. Once you have done that. And people have not received it. You got to move on. Because when you begin to see the gospel. As an impression for men. One danger begins to happen. What is the danger? The danger is to try to do things. To please men. You try to do all sorts of additions. Maybe to the extent of going to evil powers. And seek for power and empowerment. To be able to perform some magic, magical demonstrations to impress men. Then idea begin to come to read books all over the place. Book reading is not is, is fine, it's wonderful to increase your intellectual skill. Very good. But after you have increased your intellectual skill, remember what Paul said. He said, I come to you not by as if I do not know anything, not as if I have known something. I come to you with trembling, with the submission of myself, and I Teach, preach the gospel with all trembling. Okay, hallelujah. It means that the knowledge you accumulated is not going to be the source of the gospel. The source of the gospel is the power of God. The power of the Holy Ghost. Speaking God's mind to people. Not speaking what we think. But speaking God's mind. Not speaking what we accumulated from books. Not copying men around. But it's the power of God power that is offered by the holy ghost the inspiration that is given by the holy ghost himself to dish out to men now listen carefully he said as the lord commanded look at it ah matthew chapter 28 verse part 18 to 20 matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 and jesus come and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth verse 19 Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now look at it. It says, Make disciples of nations. So the gospel is discipling <laughs> through preaching. Praise, praise the Lord. Through teaching. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. Look at it. All things that I commanded you. God need to be sought when the gospel need to be preached. Before the gospel is preached, there's a need for us to ask God, what do you want me to deliver to your people? How, what do you want me to say today? I need your empowerment. I need your grace to speak through me. Very important. Very important to know that we are to preach what the Lord commanded. We are to preach from the scripture. We are not to get ourselves out of the Holy Bible and going around and impressing men. We are not to serve the emotion of people. The gospel is to be preached in the commandment of Christ, not in the commandment of men. This is so important. We've, we've, people have been so, so be confused today, they jump from one place to the other, one assembly to the other, because they are very confused. They do not know what the gospel is all about. Anywhere you see the gospel being preached and it's not following what is in the Holy Bible and it's not following uh, the commandment of God, you know for sure that's not the place to be. Most of the words have been spoken in that altar. No Bible quotation. It's all about expressions. It's all about sweet words, about enticing words, uh, philosophical words. That's the place you need to get out immediately. Because the difference between being moved in your brain, being moved by your emotion, and being moved by the spirit are two different things. When you are moved by the spirit, that's a principle. When you are not moved, 
by the spirit that just be an emotional sentiment we're going to be careful about this the gospel is not sensitization the gospel is the power of god unto salvation hallelujah gospel has nothing to do with depending on your human experience it has a lot to do leaning down before god and asking god what do you want your people to hear and look into the scripture and draw from the strength of god to remind people about what god wants to tell his people that is what the gospel is all about number three what then is the gospel the gospel is the demonstration of the holy spirit hallelujah the demonstration not of men not of the spirit of the devil but the demonstration of the holy spirit when you are in a place and you can't simply hear a simple mentioning of the of, of the holy spirit there no simple mentioning of the name of jesus not only that but it's no mentioning of the engagement with the holy spirit holy spirit is not giving room in such a gathering you know for sure that is not the place to be hallelujah it must be in the demonstration of the holy where did i get that from first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in the demonstration of the holy spirit hallelujah in the demonstration of the holy spirit another way around the one who is preaching the gospel must be the carrier of the holy ghost hallelujah the first step after you've been born again is to ask god to give you the holy spirit christ says to the disciple he said do not go out but wait okay in the day of pentecost wait on the upper room until the endowment will come to you they went there they waited they were praying hallelujah and the endowment came upon them and christ says after they have received the power he said they shall be able to have the confidence and boldness and to go out and preach the gospel so what inspired the gospel is the demonstration of the spirit hallelujah number four what then is the gospel the gospel is speaking the truth that administers life and grace another way around liberty the gospel administer is speaking of life speaking of truths that administer life and grace hallelujah you know it's not just a gospel it's just a grace no the gospel is speaking of the truths that offers grace and life very important because many people today have gone around speaking the gospel and uh, you know in a very much easier way to be able to do what they are doing and still believe in god no the gospel is not losing focus the gospel is sp simply speaking to when wherever the spook is truth of god is not spoken you know for sure grace is not abounding hallelujah ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 to 15 say that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the corny craftiness of deceitful plotting 15 but speaking the truths hallelujah the gospel must speak the truth everybody say the truth the gospel must offer the power of truth amen may grow up in all things into him who is the head the christ hallelujah john chapter 14 verse 6 john chapter 14 verse 6 jesus said to him i am the way the truth hallelujah and the life so simply the gospel is preaching of christ who is the truth and who gives also life it is the truth that gives life and give that life more abundantly hallelujah that is the grace encapsulated we are saved not by what not by works but by what by grace hallelujah no one comes to the father except through me so the gospel offer movement offer way to the father through what through the word of truths that give life and grace hallelujah luke chapter 4 verse 22 luke chapter 4 verse 22 so all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is this not joseph son look at it gracious words proceeds out of his mouth so the gospel is the word of grace hallelujah so the gospel does not condemn the gospel opened door to be able to decide for christ 
it gives men grace it does not condemn men to air fire it offer men great through speaking of the truths hallelujah when a gospel is being preached and you feel condemned in your heart hallelujah it's different from being pricked in your heart being condemned in your heart completely condemned and being pricked are two different things being condemned is that you are not you have, you, a, 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 a word is given to you that's not giving you hope but when you are pricked or touched you feel pain in your heart and your heart open up and you receive the gospel it's different from being condemned so the gospel does not condemn anyone neither does the gospel give men free access to go more into sinning and believing and believing that grace will abound hallelujah the gospel does not give any man to leave church and begin to do some, some other things and still come back to church and see god can forgive at all times it's very important to understand this number five the gospel is prayer dependent the gospel is prayer dependent hallelujah anywhere the gospel is preached the preacher must be ready to hear from god hallelujah must be able to pray before delivering the gospel this gospel is not just a play there must be an instruction there must be a, an hearing from the lord of what god needs to say through his word through the holy scripture to his people you cannot just open the bible and see anything anyhow so at, at this point uh, that's why when, when people are not prepared in, in preaching message we just easily know we easily know the way they discharge the message it's very important for for any anyone among us given the privilege to minister to anyone among us you must make sure you take your time to pray and receive from god what is it that god wants to tell his people you don't just come by guesses and just begin to throw words around it will make any impact very important to know that gospel depends on prayer Dispense on communication with God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray always. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Say, pray always with all prayer and supplication. Look at it. In the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. Okay. All supplication for the saint. Hallelujah. So the gospel cannot be discharged. All right. As Paul said, I uh, beseech you, brethren, pray for me. Hallelujah. Pray for me that all trans might be given to me. Hallelujah. No, the next verse after this says, All trans might be given to me. Praise the Lord. See, the all trans is received because prayers have been made to ask God to help deliver the gospel. The gospel is not going to be delivered by strength of men, the gospel is delivered by supplication and prayer to God. Hallelujah. Now, finally, in conclusion. I'm going to say this in conclusion. Repent and believe the gospel. Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. There are so many people today who are around the whole world and they are preaching the gospel. They do not believe what they preach. They do not accept the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They just speak. People gather before them in the name of the honor for the planning and all tricks that goes around in the environment to gather people together but the preacher of the gospel this one these people do not even believe the gospel they do not even believe the one who brought the gospel to the world Christ is not being preached as the only way to God. And repentance, salvation, is lacking in the gospel message. I want to appeal to you now, today, if a man of God or a child of God in that category, all your messages have been full of putting semantics of war together to craft meta met metaphysical languages that sweetens human ears the word of god will come to you today and tell you today that you should repent and believe the gospel who says this verse 14 mark 1 14 and 15 
Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Verse 15. And saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent! And believe the gospel. I want to close your eyes right now and begin to ask God. Everywhere I have deviated from the gospel, I need you to restore me back to the gospel message that you have ordered me to preach. Let the power of God be given and not be ashamed of the clear truth of the word of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation from sin. Salvation from broken heartedness. Salvation from captivity. Salvation from oppression. Salvation from imprisonment. The gospel of God is not enticing one of men. Oh Lord, today open my eyes. Open my eyes today. Where I've deviated from the clear truth of the gospel let there be restoration back to the truth today everyone in the community that are taking the gospel to a wrong level restore them father today restore them father today they have messed up the gospel because men must be pleased men must be satisfied everyone in the society that have turned the gospel to the mere enticing word of men mere wisdom of men mere accumulation of knowledge trying to please men trying to please the crowd today we pray for restoration on them today restore them restore them to the gospel that we are given the gospel of our lord jesus christ that offers salvation from sin the gospel of our lord jesus christ that offers salvation from broken heartedness that offers healing to every spirit and every heart the gospel of our lord jesus christ that sets people free from captivity the gospel of our lord jesus christ that gives freedom and liberty from every oppression oh lord god almighty let the gospel of lord jesus christ pray let every society community every altar every church where the name of God is being called today begin to receive the baptism of that gospel let the baptism of the Holy Ghost come upon every altar let, let our eyes again go back to what is delivered to us the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ that is what can save the generation that is what can bring you back to Christ oh Lord we pray today that the power of God will over around and begin to touch every altar in this community in this state in this nation all over the world i pray jesus your presence we move all over the place the glory of god shall hover around every life thank you in jesus name we have prayed and if you are there this morning and you are asking yourself what can i do to be saved you can say after me this morning I'm going to lead you to salvation. And the Lord God Almighty will write your name in the book of life. I say, you say after me. The word of God says, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Christ is raised from the dead, I will be saved. You are going to ask God right now, Lord, I come to you today. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that your son came died for my sin and resurrected and so lord god i give myself to you today i confess my sin every sin i've committed all to this time wash my sin away oh god take my sin away do not let my sin go along with me anymore today i determined to follow you to be one of your children thank you lord for saving me thank you lord for helping me to be part of the fold of the kingdom of christ in jesus name i pray and so lord god almighty we thank you this morning for your word thank you for the grace given to us to be able to redress again what the gospel is all about and what the gospel is not about thank you for the clarity in your word thank you for the holy spirit who does things in the way it pleases and as today your word has been spoken 
has this world to develop wings and fly all over the place and as many that will touch this line as many that this message will reach of reach to i pray that their life will not remain the same i pray mm. jesus their mm. hearts will be open to know what the gospel is all about you will release mm. your power through this message you will release your power through many lives that shall be altar wrong altar broken in pieces a new altar will be erected upon every places of worship all over the world by the power of your word by the power of the gospel that we are preached today thank you father in jesus name we have declared